Welcome to the e-commerce marketing podcast, the highly rated digital marketing podcast that provides weekly digital marketing tips and strategies from some of the world's top digital marketers and e-commerce entrepreneurs that will help you take your digital marketing to the next level. Sit back and enjoy this power packed episode hosted by Arlen Robinson, who is an e-commerce entrepreneur and digital marketing expert with over 20 years of experience. Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own affiliate program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. I am your host, Arlen Robinson, and today we have a very special guest, Dr. Travis Ziegler, who is an e-commerce entrepreneur who specializes in Amazon pay-per-click and helping business owners scale their business. Welcome to the podcast, Travis. Arlen, thanks for having me on. Pleasure to be here. Not a problem. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, We're going to be talking about a hot topic, which is Amazon pay-per-click, you know, for e-commerce businesses that sell direct to consumer, but also sell through the Amazon channel. I know this is something that they want to hear about um, because the more and more I come across e-commerce businesses, the more and more I see businesses kind of diversifying their reach by not only selling direct to consumer on their own websites, but selling through Amazon and, uh, you know, a whole host of other channels. But as we all know, Amazon is definitely the elephant in the room. (laughs) And, um, you know, they're, um, they are, um, what what is the saying? I've, I've kind of slipped my mind. They are um, they're, they're they're making a lot of headway in the e-commerce space, as we all know, um, and they're kind of dominating. So I don't see I don't think you can avoid them um, these days. Yeah, they're fifty percent of the online sales. Wow! Right wow. now, so <laughs> you can't ignore them, and if you are. You should not be. Now, I'll probably go into that a lot in this episode. <laughs> yeah, that that is crazy. That's an incredible stat, 50%. Okay. Well, uh, well, we know what we're working with now, but uh, you know, before we get into that, the topic of today, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and you know, specifically how, how you got into what you're doing today? Yeah. So the, the funny thing is I'm actually a doctor. I'm, I'm an eye doctor. And um, I graduated in 2010. And my wife graduated in 2011 from the Ohio State College of Optometry. And we practiced for about four years with my uncle. And during that four years, I just felt an itch to do something more. And so we did the three things you're not supposed to do. We quit our jobs. We moved across the country from Ohio to South Carolina, and we started two businesses. So we started two brick and mortar locations, two practices. My wife worked one, I worked the other. We switched days occasionally, but I went from seeing five patients an hour at my uncle's to a brand new practice, which is like one patient an hour. And idle hands in, in, in an entrepreneur creates things. And mm-hmm. I was bored. And so I created, we created an online business called I love, mm-hmm. and it started out as a sunglass company. We've since morphed into a dry eye company mm-hmm. and we still run. I love it is now seven years old. No, excuse me, six years old, but the dry eye side of things is only about four years old. And we've kind of built that on the backbone of Amazon selling on Amazon. And as a result of really building up our Amazon presence. We've built an audience and we've built our website presence as well. And so yeah. we've scaled that business to, we're trailing about 4.5 million right now mm-hmm. and scaling it even faster this year. We're up about 40% this year in 2021 mm-hmm. already. And as a result of the success we've had with I Love, people have asked us to help them scale on Amazon. And so mm-hmm. like any good entrepreneur, we need to have a side hustle. And like any good millennial, we need to have a side hustle. So right. the agency was born as a result of that. And so we started an Amazon ads agency. We're a small boutique agency. We don't take on a lot of clients. We try to take on usually about one per month, maybe two per month. Okay. And that's all we want to because we are a little more higher in price. But we're, I want to treat every brand that comes into our agency just like we treat I love. And so mm-hmm. I love is my main brand and anything we're doing in there, we try to bring over to the agency if it's working. And so we're trying to pretty much build all these other businesses as a result of what we're doing inside our brand itself. So that's how we started the agency. Okay, good, good stuff. And thank you for sharing that. Um, definitely interesting story there, how you um, went uh, from being a doctor of optometry to 
uh, e-commerce entrepreneur. Um, often you don't see that that shift, um, but I definitely applaud you for, you know, kind of jumping into it because I know it's, um, you know, dealing with eyes and, and the whole being a, a, a doctor in that field and then jumping into the world of e-commerce. It's definitely a switch. Um, you know, for you. So I know um, there's, I'm sure, a, a, a bit of a learning curve for you as you jumped into it. Uh, I love every second of it, though. I truly wake up every day and enjoy what I'm doing. Love jumping on podcasts like this and okay. just serving our audience. And so that's what I love to do. Okay, that's that's awesome. And uh, yeah, I love that enthusiasm. Well, we're going to go ahead and dive right in. Um, you know, a lot of people may, that may be listening familiar, of course, familiar with Amazon and familiar that there's a lot of options with regards to, um, you know, advertising through the Amazon platform. So why don't you tell us a little bit about really what is the Amazon pay-per-click? How does it work? Um, you know, and how, how would one get started with it? So the, the funny thing is Amazon advertising is still relatively new compared to like the Googles and the Facebooks. And, you know, I always hear people in the direct response world complain about Facebook changes and Google changes. Well, they have access to a ton of data on those platforms where Amazon yeah. is still a very simple, simple platform. And so basically what Amazon pay-per-click is at the, the highest level is it's a search query on a, on a buying platform. And so mm -hmm. people go to Amazon to purchase. And so whatever they're typing in, they're looking to purchase something regarding whatever they type in. And right. so the goal of Amazon pay-per-click is to show up at the top of that result for your profitable keywords that you are ranking for similar to Google, but the difference between Google and Amazon is people go to Google to research and they don't just go to buy. And so you kind of have to sift through that area in Google, whereas in Amazon, it's direct. They're, they're going to buy something and they're looking mm -hmm. to buy and they can click one button and it's shipped to them like that within sometimes an hour, sometimes a day, sometimes two days. Mm -hmm. And so the Amazon platform is just hugely powerful and you can use pay-per-click to get you to the top of the, the search search rankings of Amazon, and then you use your the, the buying on with Amazon PPC to then increase your organic rank. And okay. the funny thing about it now is that Amazon PPC is slowly becoming this extreme pay to play, just like Google is. Mm -hmm. And what we used to see is like one sponsored product at the top, and then you have all the organic rankings. We're now seeing up yep. to six in some categories. Okay. Wow. And so the or first organic one is the seventh on the page. And so wow. Amazon pay-per-click it's still in its infancy, but that's mm -hmm. like the high level overview of the search term part of it. We'll jump into the different ad types available probably in a little bit, but that's just kind of a broad overview is it's they're, they're coming to buy. And so that's the okay. beautiful thing about Amazon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the thing with it, like you said, because they're coming to buy, it's not like Google, the other search engines where it's more people trying to get information. You know, they may have a buying intent, but you know they're, they're they're asking questions. They're trying to get educated. They're trying to get informed before they make that purchase. But and then with, if with that, you mm -hmm. even take it in, into Facebook the world. Facebook is interruptive right. marketing. You're trying to get people yeah. to stop doing what they're doing mm -hmm. to go buy yeah. your product. So it's a whole yeah. different ballgame there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, with that, the Amazon, like you said, it's it's people that are there to buy. You know, you're not on Amazon. If you, I mean, of course, there's a fair amount of research involved, of course, when you're looking on Amazon, when you're trying to make a, dis a buying decision, but you know, you're really just looking at different products. You're trying to find out what is going to be the best product for you. So that's, I think, the pretty much the extent of the research. And that's incredible what you mentioned uh, as far as some of the categories with Amazon. And I've seen this myself because um, although I try to fight it, um, I'm a huge Amazon, uh, I guess you could say <laughs> my brother had a, he coined the term of, uh, of, uh, because of, uh, Jeff Bezos, he calls me a, a, a Bezosian <laughs> because I, 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 like that I think that's it. That. Yeah. Bezosian. I think he called it. Um, so I don't know if he coined that, but, uh, I hate to say it, but yeah, I, um, I've been an Amazon prime member from way back from when they, I think first launched prime and. I think every day it's almost like Christmas here at my house because there's packages showing up every single day because I tried to do my best to optimize my time. And if I don't have to go out in a store to a store, do any of that, I'm just going to go on Amazon. And um, yeah, well, so fun hack, if you're a buyer on Amazon, you can actually pick Amazon delivery day, which is a Tuesday for us. And okay. they actually package it all into one big box. So you don't have to keep okay. getting boxes after boxes after boxes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, I don't think I've ever selected that as an option because I'm always like, 
usually that that option is the next day uh, to when I actually want to get it. So I'm always in such a hurry. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let me just go ahead and get it immediately or the next day. So um, yeah, I'll have to try that. But that makes sense. I can definitely cut down on waste as well. Um, you know, having all of these packages and stuff from not only, for, you know, for the environment, but just, you know, the fact that you got to uh, break them down and then put it in your recycle bin and all of that. So uh, definitely helps. Um, so you, you kind of mentioned when we're talking about, you know, the pay-per-click um, and what it really is that there's, of course, different ad types available when you're looking to get a sponsored ad or sponsored listing on Amazon. So what, what actually are those ad types that are available right now? Yeah. So the main one and the oldest one is sponsored products and sponsored products is pretty much what I alluded to before. Somebody's typing in something to search and that's what they're trying to find in that product. The reason mm -hmm. sponsored products is so effective is you don't have to do anything. You just have to find the keywords that you want to go try to rank for the keywords that you want to target and you just have to pay for them. It's as simple mm -hmm. as that. And then, you know, adjusting the bids to adjust your placement, bid higher, you get up higher, bid lower, you get down lower. There's a core strategy behind that. That's kind of the basic, that is the framework of all Amazon PPC. And whenever I have somebody new coming into the space, I actually tell them only focus on sponsored products until you have it down and have it profitable. Because if you can get sponsored products down, then when you go out to these other types of ad types that are in Amazon, mm -hmm. when, when you expand beyond that, you're, you're going up the funnel. Whereas mm -hmm. in sponsored products is one of the lowest parts of the funnel in Amazon. Okay. And then the next step after you get that down is sponsored brand ads. Sponsored mm -hmm. brand ads is more of a branding play. You're going to show up at the very top of search with a big old banner ad. And there's other placements as well throughout Amazon with banners. And you've probably been on a product page and seen banners across it. Those are all sponsored brand ads. Right. And those are highly effective because they're big and they take up a lot of real estate, but they're more expensive and mm -hmm. they get a lot more clicks. And so I don't like my beginning people that are just beginning with Amazon PPC to go to those until they've mastered that sponsored products first. So we have right. sponsored products, pretty low in the funnel, sponsored brands, we're moving up in the funnel. And then we have sponsored display, which is kind of the top of the bottom, the funnel, but it's also at the bottom. And I'll kind of go through that a little bit. Sponsored mm -hmm. display is just like Google display advertising. You're, you're showing up everywhere, not only on Amazon, but also all of Amazon's affiliate partners. And so you have, you know, Yahoo is a great example. If you go to yahoo.com, who goes mm -hmm. to yahoo.com anymore, but it's a great example of display network advertising. You have display network advertising all over the right side of the page, in the middle of the page. And these are just ads for your product all over the internet. That's sponsored mm -hmm. display advertising, very top of funnel, but you can create that advertisement to be bottom of the funnel as well, because you can retarget people that have purchased your product already. And yeah. so we always do that. We're in consumables. And so we always retarget the people that have bought before so they can come back and buy again without mm -hmm. having to search for it. And so sponsored display is great for top of the funnel when you're starting to prospect, but it's also great for bottom of the funnel. And so that bottom of the funnel though, I recommend people getting in right away. So always retargeting people that have purchased from you before mm -hmm. and making sure that that's, that's running. So the two first ads I always have people run are the search ads, which are sponsored products. Mm -hmm. And then the retargeting for purchases, which is sponsored display. Gotcha. And when you're doing the search term ads, you want to focus on your brand name first because people are searching your brand name, especially for your direct to consumer brand. And you're trying to get people to buy on your website. You're wasting money by not showing up on Amazon because the first thing I do, I see something I want on Facebook. I go to Amazon to see if it's there first. And if yeah, you're not there and there's something similar, I might yeah. buy your competitor as a result. And so, but if you yeah. are there, and then you, you have your sponsored products dial in for your brand name and you're at the mm -hmm. top, people are going to buy it because they can click twice. And gotcha. I'll go into an example real quick about this. We have a lot of blogs. We have probably close to 500 different blog posts that we've done over the last five years. Mm -hmm. And all of our blogs, even though they're on our Shopify page, we send them over to Amazon to buy. So there's a click here button to purchase or check price and purchase button. And it goes over to Amazon to buy. And people always ask me, why do I do that? If you have them on your Shopify site, why don't you try to keep them there? Because mm -hmm. my product on Amazon has a 45% conversion rate. My product oh, on my wow. Shopify store has a 3.7% conversion rate. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and okay, so gotcha. I want to get them to buy on Amazon. And so that's the importance of Amazon though. So if I'm browsing Facebook, I see your ad, I go over to Amazon to buy and you are there two clicks and I've purchased it. Whereas if mm -hmm. I try to buy on your Shopify store, 
Shopify is starting to make it easier with Shopify Pay and everything and Apple yeah, Pay yeah. and Google Pay, but mm -hmm. it's still not two clicks. It's still like five yeah. clicks and people yeah. love simplicity. Yeah. So those are the three basic Amazon ad types. Now there are even more beyond that. The Amazon is just starting to open up called Amazon DSP, Demand Side Platform, and Amazon Attribution. I'm not going to go into those as much because those are more advanced and I don't recommend those to my clients until we have these first three sponsored products, sponsored brands, and sponsored display kind of dialed in first. Does that all make sense? Yeah, it, it definitely does. And I didn't really even realize myself that there were so many different ad options. I, I'm familiar with the the Amazon, uh, the products, the sponsored products. So I, I see that all the time when I'm searching for things and I'm, I'm looking to buy things. But yeah, um, I didn't really realize about the brand. And, you know, it makes sense that they have that and that's good for the retargeting and getting people to come back uh, you know, to your to your brand's products. One thing that I that definitely stuck out to me that I want to kind of chime back, um, circle back on is what you said about seeing a product on Facebook or another platform. Um, obviously, you could buy that product directly from that particular consumer. But like you said, most of the time, people are like you, they see that product, they're going to just go, they're going to go straight to Amazon because they know it, it's it's super easy for one Amazon has their credit card for two. Most people these days have a prime account, so they know that the shipping is not going to be too much of an issue. They can get it quickly. And then I think for three, one thing that I'm always looking at is just the ease of returns. Um, they know it's super easy to get stuff returned, even if the product is used. Um, you know, Amazon makes it really easy. They'll even do, you know, the UPS pickup for you. You don't even have to leave your house. They'll come pick up the product and you can get it sent back to you and that's those are the things that i'm keeping in mind myself and i know people are as well so if they see that product yeah it's even though they could just go click the, click on that purchase it directly from your site they're they're gonna they're gonna check amazon um and, and then also to, to check the pricing as well because sometimes it can be a little bit more competitive on, on amazon yeah and then one additional thing is my credit cards that are on file on amazon they're connected to my rewards. So I can use my reward points on Amazon and not even have to pay a cent for it. And so right. because we have a credit card that pays for all our advertising and we spend mm -hmm. about $90,000 a month on advertising. Mm -hmm. And so we get lots of rewards. And so we get right. to use that on Amazon. So it's, it's a good way to also connect that. And you can't do that on Shopify. Well, now you can, but you used to not be able to on Shopify and other people's websites. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that 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 makes sense as well. You know, I'm familiar with that rewards tied into your credit cards. The same thing with my credit card. Now I can see my rewards that are tied to the credit card that I have on Amazon. So I'm constantly seeing that I can say when I want to use it, it just makes it super easy. So that is also a kind of a win win uh, for Amazon. Now, you know, when we're thinking about pay per click listings, um, no matter what platform the bottom line is, and you mentioned it earlier, the bottom line is you want to, you know, you want to be listed as, as high as possible um, to get maximum visibility and maximum sales or match maximum potential sales. So what are some strategies for actually increasing your, uh, your ad visibility? Yeah. The easiest one, increase your bid. That's, that's one mm -hmm. of the easiest things that you can do is increase that bid. And Amazon okay. has a lot of options that you can do. And they have what's called up-down bidding and down-only bidding and bid adjustment percentages. And what you can do inside your actual Amazon campaign is you can adjust the bid to go up when they think a sale is more likely to occur. And you can go up 900%. So it's not a small adjustment. You can go up. So if you're bidding a dollar and you put your bid adjustment to 900%, it will go up to $9 if they think that that customer is going to make a sale if they put you at the top spot. And okay. so they have some smart bidding technologies in there. It's not perfect. It's not great yet, but it mm -hmm. works. And so top of search placement, so top of search of, of the search rankings, you can adjust for that. And that is incredibly effective. I use, there's different bidding strategies. I use down only. So I tell mm -hmm. Amazon that they can't adjust it. I, I give them parameters to go around. And down only seems to be the best. Up and down tends to be, very uh, dramatic and it spends mm -hmm. a lot of money. And so Amazon will also drop your bid if it doesn't think that user is going to convert into a sale. So they've actually started categorizing their shoppers into buyers, mm -hmm. clickers, and just browsers, just like Facebook does the same thing. Facebook has scrollers, engagers, and buyers. 
And mm -hmm. so when you're picking the specific objective in Facebook ads, you know, it's going to target the different people. So if you want engagement, they're going to focus on those engagers or right. engagers, if that's even a word, if you want mm -hmm. buyers, they're going to focus on those buyers by showing that ad to them. And if you just want brand awareness, they're going to focus on that scroller. And so the same thing with Amazon in a different type of context, they have, you know, the buyers, the non-buyers and the browsers. So I don't know if that's official. I've never heard mm -hmm. anything about that, but that's right. kind of the dynamic of how they're, they're showing their bids, but you know, increasing price is number one, but mm -hmm. there's an effective ad called a product targeting ad. And this is inside sponsor products, the main one that we tell people to focus on. And you can actually bid to show up on your competitor's page. And I think this mm -hmm. is one of the most effective ads that you can do. So what we do inside of our clients' accounts, inside our accounts is, let's say for one of our, we, we sell eyelid wipes. So wipes that you okay. use on your eyelid. Mm -hmm. And what we do is for eyelid wipes, we're ranked, I think, number three and number seven. For our mm -hmm. two eyelid wipes, we're in a, it's a heavily competitive category. We're, we're fighting pharmaceutical companies. But what we do is we know we can't outbid them because they're pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. but we can outplay them. And how we do that is all the top 10 results on the first page, we're on every single one of their pages and we're on it multiple times. And okay. the reason that's so important is because when somebody's searching eyelid wipes and they click on that first, second or third listing, which isn't us. Mm -hmm. And it's because these companies, again, have been around for 20 years. So they're, they've got some brand presence. Right. They see our product on their page over and over and over. So when they go back to the search results, they see our product again. And so it's that, you know, that old adage of the customer sees you seven times and then they'll buy. And so we're showing up everywhere that this customer that's looking for eyelid wipes is. Mm -hmm. And eventually they just kind of subconsciously pick our brand because they've seen us over and over and over again, even though we're one of the highest price in that top 10, I think the right. top two price products are ours. And so even though we are the top two price, they see us over and over again. So they start to trust us. And so mm -hmm. that's where you can increase that visibility is with that product targeting ad and targeting specific products that are your competitors that get all the traffic. And so then you'll, they'll, you'll start to show up even higher in the rankings. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Um, you know, of course, a lot all of this is uh, predicated on you know the the bid amount, and then I would imagine it's just like Google. Any of the popular categories categories that um, you know are, are are popular at a maybe at a certain time. Maybe let's say the seasonal product uh, seasonal category maybe is popular for let's say during the winter holidays when people are buying let's say christmas accessories and that type of thing i would imagine it's just like google at those times um the pay-per-click amount is just going to just kind of go up and up um whereas other times it will go lower is that just all driven by the bid amounts of all of the you know the different businesses that are kind of contributing in, in it 100 percent. so yeah okay. um our competition is mostly pharmaceutical companies so they like to drive yeah. the bid up really high i'm wow. talking 30 to 40 dollars per click and wow. <laughs> it's hard to compete. So we just got to outmaneuver them. And that's, that's what yes. we do inside the agency too. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. That's uh, uh yeah. I don't see how you can compete with 40 to $50 a click. Yeah. You, you've got to have deep pockets to be able to sustain that. <laughs> yeah. Our lifetime yeah. value is there. We could do it. It's just, yeah, you okay. have, to have the cash to be able to do it. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. Um, well, you know, as we get ready to, to wrap things up, I'm, I'm always looking to see what successful businesses that we can learn from and what kind of what have they done. And in your experience, um, what are some businesses either that you've worked with or ones that we can just check out um, that have, you know, that are utilizing Amazon PPC and um, who are they? What have they done? And those are some specific things that we can learn from them. So I'd highly recommend just just searching my brand name. Please don't click on any of my sponsor products because then that, that costs me less you're going to buy. But Hydrate is the name of my brain. So it's H-E-Y-E, like an, an eyeball, Hydrate. Mm -hmm. And so instead of the Y, it's E-Y-E. -E, get it? It's okay. like a pun on words. So Hydrate. Search mm -hmm. that brand name and you'll see how we kind of take over all that space. And like I said before, Eyelid Wipes, and you can see my brand called Mediviz. But some brands that are doing it really well in space, Starbucks. Starbucks is amazing in this space. So they dominate yeah. coffee. And Levi's jeans. So if you go into the okay. jeans space, they're all over. So those are kind of my two favorite like case studies when you go in and look at those. Mm -hmm. um, they're just fun to watch. And the cool thing, kind of cool thing about it, not fully cool thing about it, is brands are starting to take Amazon seriously. 
And so it is driving up costs, of course, but when they take it seriously, they can increase their profits and their market share so much faster just as a result of being on Amazon. So Levi's and Starbucks are two examples that, you know, we kind of follow and just kind of see what they're doing, see what they have access to, because sometimes bigger brands like that get access to features before we do. And then what we can do is find that feature, ask our account manager inside Amazon, like, Hey, why aren't we getting this yet? And then we can usually unlock it because with I love, we spend enough on the Amazon platform that we usually get access to features first because they know we'll try them. And so, yeah, I would just like search some of the major brands that you know and just see how they're doing. Um, but there's some amazing brands out there. Another one, um, I can't think of the name right now, On It. O-N-N-I-T is another good one that just does a really good job with amazing ads or Amazon ads. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, great. Yeah, those are some some great brands that, yeah, I know most people are familiar with. Um, they'll definitely check out your brand, um, Hydrate with the EYE. And then, of course, Levi's is another huge one that I've seen myself. Actually, um, I'll say one more. Okay. One more. Um, uh, Zhao, Z-H-O-U, started by okay. a couple of friends of ours. Um, mm-hmm. Huge company now. But they they started on Amazon and they just dominated Amazon and they still do. Okay. But now as a result of them focusing and selling so much on Amazon, they're now everywhere. They're in Walmart, Target, Vitamin wow. World, Vitamin Shops. So they, mm-hmm. they've pretty much overtaken or they've pretty much gone everywhere as a result of focusing on Amazon. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, well, that's good to know that, you know, Amazon can be a launching point. Because um, I think a lot of times I don't, you don't see that that often. A lot of times you'll see some of the successful brands, you know, they may be successful direct to consumer or in their retail brick and mortar establishment. And then Amazon becomes kind of a, um, an ancillary channel for them. So, but a lot of times you don't see the other way around where they go Amazon, they get real yep. big. And then that allows them to propel into other channels. Um, and something that I think is going to happen in this space since Amazon mm-hmm. bought Whole Foods is they're going to take the best sellers in Amazon and mm-hmm. then they're going to start stocking the shelves of Whole Foods with it. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah, it makes sense because, you know, it's they have the huge uh, data platform, you know, for all of their sales. So it makes sense how they can just say, okay, these are some hot selling items. We can go ahead and just put yep. stock them in the, in the Whole Foods. So it makes, makes a lot of sense. Um, well, this has been awesome, uh, Travis. Um, I've definitely learned a lot. Um, you know, we all know um, Amazon is here to stay. They're not going anywhere anytime soon, as far as I know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's definitely something as far as the pay-per-click ads are concerned. It's definitely something that I think any business that thinking about Amazon or is already on Amazon, it's definitely uh, selling on Amazon needs to definitely look into. Um, so I have learned a lot. I know our listeners have as well. But what I like to always do is just to close thing up switch gears and close things out with a uh, closing question. It's more of a fun fact question. If you don't mind sharing with us, uh, what's the one fun fact that you think our audience would be interested to know about you? Yeah. So um, my main mission in life, my wife and I's main mission in life is to help. There's 1 billion people with a B that are blind due to lack of glasses. Oh, wow. 1 billion people blind. So a pair of reading glasses that you and I can pick up off the shelf at a Mm -hmm. drugstore for a dollar People just don't have access to that. And they're actually, yeah. they're blind and they can't read anymore as a result of just getting older. And so yeah. we're kind of on this mission to help heal the 1 billion that are blind just due to lack of glasses. And wow. it's a huge, huge mission in life, but mm-hmm. we have some ideas on how we can help solve it. Um, it's just a matter of doing it. So we actually donate a portion of the top line revenues from both our agency and from I Love, our business to our charity that then funds okay. these mission work, this mission work. And we're doing about two to three missions a year. And okay. eventually probably in 10 to 20 years, we're going to try to start a school down in the Caribbean. That's going to mm-hmm. teach people how to do it in their own Island or in their own village, wherever okay. they are in the Caribbean. And so we'll teach people to go out and heal this problem with the, the lack of reading glasses. And then mm-hmm. if they can't heal it, they'll send it back into a main hub. So that's our main mission in life. And then okay. we do this stuff for fun because it's a blast. We love helping entrepreneurs and we love building a brand and helping right. dry eye sufferers. And then we take that money, pull it to our charity, and then we go on these mission trips. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's awesome. And thank you for sharing that. And it's definitely an admirable uh, cause there. I didn't realize that stat was so, so high. There was, a, you know, a billion people that can't, you know, have access to glasses. They can't read without it. Um, yeah, myself, as you see, I have glasses on. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a fairly new eyeglass wearer. I think I've been wearing glasses now for about going on two years now. And um, yeah, I definitely see if I didn't if I didn't have these glasses on, <laughs> it would be very difficult for me to read anything. I would be squinting and I probably have headaches every day. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely see the value in having, you know, proper sun uh, reading glasses. Um, and that's so, yeah, that's, that's a, a normal nice part of turning f in your 40s, going through your yeah. 40s and then through your 50s. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have access to those reading glasses, you're done. You can't read. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And that's, um, yeah, that affects a lot of people. Yeah, if you can't read. Um, well, great, Travis. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, and like I said, it's an honorable mission. Um, but, you know, lastly, before we let you go, um, if any of our listeners want to reach out to you and pick your brain anymore about Amazon PPC or, or any other maybe Amazon marketing um, tactic, uh, what is the best way for them to reach you? Yeah, so the easiest way is on Facebook. So we have a group on Facebook called Amazon PPC Pros. And that's mm -hmm. just kind of a, a free mastermind community of like-minded sellers that are just trying to help each other out um, with Amazon PPC tactics. We come out with a live video there once a week. And we also do a, a video on YouTube. Our channel is also called Amazon PPC Pros um, by Profitable Pineapple. And our ad agency is called Profitable Pineapple. And okay. Profitable Pineapple, it, it's a tongue twister. So I have to like <laughs> yeah. consciously yeah. say it, but profitablepineapple.com is our website. We have a free Amazon PPC masterclass there for people that are just getting started. And then of course we actually manage people's ads for them too. So if you're interested in that, you can just head to profitablepineapple.com and then just fill out a form there and okay. we'll be in touch shortly. Sounds great. Thank you for sharing that. And that definitely is a tongue twister, profitable, profitable pineapple. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I could say that five times without getting twisted, <laughs> but yeah, great name. Definitely a catchy name. I definitely encourage uh, everyone to check that out. Go to the profitable pineapple.com to, to get more in info on that. Uh, but well, it was awesome having you, Travis. I appreciate it. And thank you for sharing that link. And uh, thank you, of course, for joining us today on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Sure. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with everyone you know. Are you looking to take your digital marketing to the next level, but are tired of weeding through countless YouTube videos with unproven and untrusted marketing strategies? Well, we have the answer for you. The More Sales Every Month Online Digital Marketing Course. In this information-packed course, you will learn effective keyword research, link building, content marketing, and much more to attract and convert your site visitors into paying customers. Just go to moresaleseverymonth.com and sign up today for a low one-time fee. In addition to this power-packed course, if you would like to get access to a growing repository of digital marketing articles, PDFs, and eBooks, check out getosi.com slash resources and opt in to get full access to our library of priceless marketing information to help you take your digital marketing to the next level.